So we first met Miss Barnett around March of last year. I know, long time. And since about 99% of you weren't here back then, and those of you who were probably don't remember, let's rewatch her original hearing. We'll now be back on the record if Mr. Patterson is ready in 2021 TR 1470. All parties as before, State of Kansas versus Megan Jane Barnett. Uh, Mr. Patterson, does your client wish an evidentiary hearing on this motion to revoke probation? Yes, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Norris, you may call your first witness. Um, Your Honor, uh, State would call Christine Donovan. Ms. Donovan, do you solemnly swear? The testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, God. I do. Thank you. Please proceed, Ms. Norris. Uh, please state your name and occupation for the record. Christine Donovan. I'm a court service officer in Butler County. And how long have you been supervising uh, Ms. Uh, Barnett? Uh, since she was placed on probation on September 20th of 2021. And have you previously done a, a requested revocation in, uh, for her case? Yes, this is a second request for revocation. She was reinstated on probation previously. Um, sorry, I'm looking for that date. That was on... July 11th of 2022, uh, she was ordered to serve 48 hours in the Butler County Jail. And after serving that time, placed back on probation. Um, probation was extended for 12 months. Okay, and then you said that was in July of 2022? Yes. Okay, and uh, you've been uh, supervising her since that date? Yes. And uh, what sort of issues uh, were you having with Miss uh, Barnett that caused you to request another revocation? Uh, the defendant uh, had violations with her scram. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay objection. Response, Ms. Norris? Um, Your Honor, I wasn't actually going to have her go into the specifics, um, but I, I do know that there is no one from SCRAM that's necessarily present uh, here today uh, regarding uh, specifics on violations. But um, I do believe that Ms. Donovan can speak to the fact that she was on that as part of probation, et cetera. Ms. Donovan, what... Uh... What uh, signed information or releases do you have from the defendant with the scram? Uh, Your Honor, they have been, while she was on scram, they had been communicating with me regularly regarding non-compliance issues. I can't object. I don't think there's any release that's going to get around a hearsay objection and evidentiary it's objection. Well, Mr. Patterson, they are required to give reports to the court. I, I agree, Judge. Donovan is my agent. And Judge, again, I don't know how you get around hearsay objections unless there's a witness present to testify or if there's an affidavit that would uh, uh, allow this to proceed on a probation violation. Ms. Donovan, do you have what kind of reports do you have from the uh, Scram people. Your Honor, they forwarded um, reports regarding the tampers and the alcohol violations. Um, they are, are graphs regarding those violations and how they occurred. Um, again, something they would probably be able to attest to. And these are documents that you receive and keep as a records, official records custodian in this file? Yes. Well, I would say that these records, records are part of the official record and she's custodian of them. 
and as such, they should be an exception to the hearsay, Mr. President. I, I would ask for further argument, Judge. Go ahead. Judge, and I guess um, as a way of voir dire, I would suggest that if Ms. Donovan was testified, she would testify that these are not records that she keeps in her regular um, course of business, specifically the actual SCRAM documentation, the SCRAM, um, that, uh, the SCRAM uh, reports, that these are reports that are kept in the regular course of business from the 13th Judicial Electronic Monitoring that um, Ms. Donovan merely receives copies, but that's not a hearsay workaround without having somebody to establish that those records were kept in a regular course of business, that the foundation is laid for them, and then they would come in. Um, it, it's almost hearsay upon hearsay at this point. So um, without uh, um, the hearsay being cured, Judge, I don't believe there's any way around it. Well, let me just ask uh, Ms. Norris or Ms. Donovan, can you get somebody from the SCRAM on here in a reasonable period of time? Um, Your Honor, I have someone in my office contacting um, Kelsey at, uh, at the okay. monitoring office to see whether okay. or not uh, she would be available um, at this time. All right. So we'll come back to that, Ms. Donovan, uh, other than the scram. Are you able to proceed, Ms. Norris, and try to do, I, I think you're kind of multitasking there. Are you able to proceed with your questioning of Ms. Donovan, skipping over that, but coming back if you get the information you're looking for? Um, yes, Your Honor, I, be I believe that we, we, we have some additional information. Um, she was placed back on probation in, on January 7th, or I'm sorry, July 11th of 2022, uh, Ms. Donovan. And uh, when was she placed on the SCRAM and why? Uh, SCRAM was a condition of her bond when she was released uh, from custody after being arrested on the first warrant. And when she appeared for the warrant to show cause hearing on that first warrant, and the court reinstated her, the court required that SCRAM remain a condition of probation. Okay, and um, so she's on the SCRAM um, as a basically continuation um, of, of, of her bond. And then, uh, Um, you had written up an addendum to your original warrant, which the bulk of which talks quite a bit about um, SCRAM violations. Are there any other violations in there that are not related necessarily to the SCRAM unit in your original warrant? The initial warrant is related to SCRAM and alcohol violations. Okay. And did she make any admissions to you about alcohol violations? At what point? While she's being supervised by you since July of 2022. Yes. And when were those? I'm going to have to review um, my notes here. Her file is uh, very extensive as okay. there has been a lot of activity. <laughs> okay. And basically I'm, I'm asking for specifically when she has um, made admissions uh, and, and, and either personally to you or signed admissions that you have documentation of. Sure. Thanks. And Your Honor, while she is reviewing that, it's my understanding that um, Miss Miss um, uh, Moore um, is getting on from electronic monitoring. And go ahead, Christine. All right, so we can come back to the. Yeah, go ahead.
Okay, well, as to the signed admissions, those are the ones we reviewed initially. Those would have been on February 6th and March 3rd of this year, 2023. Those or are just made admissions of alcohol use. Yes. Okay. Um, February 6th and March what? February 6th and March 3rd. She said on both those dates and in writing that she had used alcohol? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. And in addition to that, I have three Wichita Police Department cases indicating action here say your honor are you objecting to the wichita police department cases or to what she yes. has not yet said I, I do not object to the february 6th or the march 3rd since those are admissions directly by miss barnett anything that would be contained within a wichita police department report would be hearsay object to hearsay okay but you're not objecting to the fact that she has wichita pd cases that, that she has matter. pending matters I don't think is relevant either so much because they're pending so it's, I guess it's, it's the relevancy is not there either well let's let Miss Norris follow up on that maybe she can connect that and and Christine just uh I guess maybe explain a little bit without going into information that's in the police reports but you're mentioning police reports why Uh, they involve the defendant, and they uh, regarded contact with the police and her that indicated she was under the influence. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Sustained. Okay. Now, um, has she been reporting to you uh, since she was placed back on probation with you since in, in July of 2022? Yes. And how often and how is she reporting? She has uh, reported by um, FaceTime, telephone, uh, she is reported um, in person in Sedgwick County. And thus, that is why I said we are communicating quite frequently with the CSO there. Okay. Uh, she has reported very frequently because there has been so much going on with her case. Um, so it's not only scheduled appointments, but just continuous contact for various reasons. Okay. And did uh, the defendant inform you of her contact with law enforcement or did you find that out some other way? Objection, um, Your Honor. It's not an allegation contained within this hearing. It'd be irrelevant to the warrant to show cause. Overruled. Miss Donovan? Um, on some of the occasions, she did notify me. Um, on some of them, I learned um, uh, through other ways. Okay. And um, your uh, biggest concerns um, regarding this defendant and what you think is most appropriate at this time for her? Um, well, this is a second uh, inpatient treatment program during her probation term since I have been supervising her. And I have worked with her extensively, um, trying to help her um, 
seek out services and get well. And she has gotten into treatment again the second time after all of these things have occurred, um, but was somewhat resistant initially to following through. Um, so she's, she's currently in treatment now? Yes. And you're saying that she went into treatment after this March 3rd um, admission of uh, drug and alcohol usage? Yes. And I will say that she actually had a bed date prior and did not go when scheduled. Um, so as I said, I've been trying to work with her. However, it has been somewhat of a struggle because she had been resistant. Uh, she did finally get into inpatient, which is, in my judgment, where she needs to be. Um, but one thing we didn't mention was that um, after a prior violation last year, a modification order was done for her to go into inpatient uh, treatment back on October 31st of 2022 um, due to alcohol violations and scram violations at that time. Um, she did go into treatment and complete a program. She completed two weeks of inpatient um, and was discharged to outpatient um, and then struggled on outpatient and basically quit attending. Um, and thus she's in inpatient now. Um, but it has um, been constant alcohol violations, um, concerns about her well being. Um, I have had to call and request a welfare check. Other people have called to request as well. Objection, um, hearsay. All right. Uh, so, so sustained to other people, but overruled to Ms. Donovan's two calls to. Did I understand you made in the calls to welfare check? Yes, Your Honor. Um, uh, the defendant, I understand, had been engaging in mental health treatment. Um, I was notified uh, by Hunter Health that she had been attending mental health treatment as well prior to going into inpatient treatment. However, that has also been a big concern um, throughout this time. Um, like I said, I, I feel like she is probably where she needs to be right now, given all of the totality of what's occurred. Um, and again, I'm limited to tell you um, because of the hearsay rule, but there has been a lot. Okay. Um, thank you, Ms. Donovan. I don't think I have any further questions, but Mr. Patterson may have some follow-up for you. Mr. Patterson, cross-examination? No questions for this witness, Your Honor. Right. Any further evidence, Ms. Norris? Um, uh, yes, Your Honor, we would be calling Kelsey Moore with electronic monitoring. Please raise your right hand, Ms. Moore. You solemnly, do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. All right, thank you. Please proceed. Please state your name and occupation for the record. Kelsey Moore. I'm an electronic monitoring officer for the 13th District. <laughs> And Ms. Moore, are you familiar with uh, Megan Barnett? I am. And can you explain to the court uh, why you're familiar with her? She was placed on um, our program on a SCRAM unit back in May of 22. Okay, and and uh, uh, is uh, she still on a unit or when did she stop being on a unit? Um, her end date was December 27th of 22. Okay, and do you recall why that's the end date? Um, there was a motion filed. She was having some issues with her ankles and the bracelet. Uh, like some- uh, Health issues. Okay, okay. As opposed to um, like electronic issues or whatever with the bracelet. Right. Okay, and uh, while you were supervising her from basically May to December, 
or did she have violations uh, of the uh, of this grant program? Was she compliant? Uh, no, she had multiple violations. Okay, and um, like a couple violations. Uh, um, <clears throat> I can. We've got five alcohol consumption events and twenty-seven tamper events. Um, some of the tamper events were tampers with alcohol um, because SCRAM, if there's a tamper involved and alcohol, they categorize it as a tamper because they will not confirm an alcohol consumption with a tamper. Okay. So, um, okay. That's, that's quite a few vi violations uh, and tamper events. And uh, what can tamper events in include? So um, <clears throat> tamper is anything placed between the skin and the unit itself. Because um, when the unit takes a reading, it, it's taking IR voltage, it's taking temperature, and it's taking alcohol. So if something's placed between the unit and the skin, the temperature changes, the IR voltage changes, and the device recognizes a tamper. Okay. Betty, I'm gonna stop you right there. It is not appropriate or acceptable for the lady sitting next to the defendant to be slipping her notes during this hearing, unless she is co-counsel, attorney of law to Mr. Patterson, she needs to quit leading this witness and giving her notes. Now I see there are two more people present. Who are all these people sitting there with this defendant, Mr. Patterson? Well, Judge, I believe they're all personnel of the treatment facility. And in fact, the one next to her is her therapist who will be the next witness or the first witness I call. Well, then it's inappropriate for them to be slipping notes back and forth. Maybe we need to have these witnesses sequestered if they're, if they're going to keep slipping her. Yeah, I, I think she will sit back and far enough that she's blurred out and wait to be called. All right. Well, I don't want any more of this slipping notes back and forth. That's inappropriate. She wouldn't be allowed to sit at council table and do that if this were a live hearing, and she's not going to be allowed to do it at a at a uh, Zoom hearing either. All right, go ahead, ladies, if you remember where you are. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, so you had said, um, we were just talking about what included a, a tamper event, and then you said, an al and how many alcohol events? There were five confirmed consumption events. Um, and I think I was tallying it. There was close to 20 of the tampers 20 out of the 27 tampers were tampers with alcohol. Okay. And um, from uh, July 11, 22, to when you said that she was off of this grant program in um, late December, were those in those in that time frame? There was one tamper May of 22. The rest occurred after September 17th of 22. Okay. Okay. So basically everything, most of the ones that you, that you have and that we've been talking about, they all happened after, uh, after July of 22, when she was placed back on probation. Correct. And um, what do you mostly do when uh, you get this information? Uh, do you contact the uh, the defendants, um, uh, the probation officer, all of the above? How do how do you kind of deal with these tamper and alcohol events? Uh, we do both. Um, with the alcohol events, they go straight to um, the CSOs. With the tampers, depending on if it's just a tamper or if it's a tamper with alcohol. On the tampers, typically the first just tamper with no alcohol will warn the client to watch their clothing, make sure nothing's sliding between the unit and their bracelet. Um, and then after that, we start issuing violations uh, for any subsequent tampers after the first one that gets a warning. Um, now the tampers with alcohol, with her specifically, just they were day after day. I just ran a lump sum report and send it to Ms. Donovan. Okay.
And um, when uh, defendants are in uh, programs, like say they're in treatment or something like that, do you guys uh, still have the, the unit on them or no? Yeah, so she was in an inpatient treatment somewhere. Um, I can't remember which facility she was in. And she had called because the bracelet was irritating her. So I went out to the treatment facility and swapped at ankles and did a fit adjustment for her. Um, okay. So, in, and the only place that you generally remove that is when, when they're in, like in jail? <clears throat> Sometimes. Um, if they're going to only be in jail for a couple of days, we just leave it on. The jail lets them wear it. Um, so if they're only going in for like a dip, we'll just leave it on during that time. Uh, the only time I'll take it off is with a judge's order because the judge orders it on, a judge has to order it off. Okay. Um, thank you, Ms. Moore. Uh, I don't think I have any further questions, but Mr. Patterson may have some follow-up, okay? Mr. Patterson, cross-examination. Thank you, Judge. Um, Ms. Moore, I, I wanted to see if I could get, first of all, a little bit more information on this tamper with alcohol versus just an alcohol. What, what's the difference in that? So if there's a just an alcohol, that means that the temperature stays steady right where the normal for the client. So when they're first placed on, we take what's called baseline readings. So it can tell where the IR voltage is supposed to be. And you you expect that to be even keeled because once it's on the client, it shouldn't vary. There shouldn't be anything moving that bracelet um, and so just an alcohol event, there's no tamper, the temperature is the same, the IR voltage is steady, and there's alcohol detected. Um, if there's a tamper with alcohol, then you're seeing that IR voltage kind of bounce around, the temperatures changed in one direction or the other, um, so it recognizes it as a tamper, but it's still getting alcohol readings during that time as well. Okay. Now, you stated that the monitor was removed on December 27th because of a health issue that had developed. Is that correct? Yeah, she was having, I think, sores on her leg um, from the unit. Okay. And, it, and I'm looking at a report that indicates a substantial number of these incidents happened in December of 2022. Is that correct? Um, eight. I've got eight in December of 2022. December of 2022. Yeah, I've got eight. One of them being just alcohol and then one, two, three, four, five, six being tampers with alcohol and then one just being a tamper. Okay, and the tampers, could they have had anything to do with her health issue she was having that was leading up to the time to take it off? Uh, in a conversation uh, with her, and she was placing, I believe, a cloth between the bracelet and her ankle okay. um, when she would drink, is what she had said. And you stated that you then report these to the probation office, is that correct? Yes. Do you also have a conversation with Ms. Barnett anytime these, these occur? We had talked to her a few times. Um, sometimes it, it wasn't the easiest getting a hold of her. Uh, we would call and she wouldn't answer, so we would text her and have her call us back. Um, we had talked to her, but if Christine had already talked to her, then I didn't talk to her as well. So do you talk to, to the clients and try and verify from them whether these are actual alcohol events or if something else was going on? So the company will ask if the company wants to know what the client's doing during that time that I tell them, um, uh, then I'll ask the client, hey, what were you doing during this time and report back to the company. On these specific ones, they confirmed it um, just due to the data that, that had been collected off of the bracelet. They didn't need to know what she was doing at that time. So she never 
was asked to confirm any of these? Um, I know I'd had conversations with her about, about them. Um, I never asked her if they were true or not, I don't think. Okay. No other questions. Ms. Moore, you said you don't know if you ever asked her if they were true or not, but yet earlier you testified that she told you when she was drinking, she would leave a cloth between her ankle and her bracelet. How do you right. justify both those answers combined? So I talked to her about the tamper, but yeah. I did not talk to her about the alcohol events he was asking about. I see, thank you. Ms. Norris, any redirect? No, Your Honor, thank you. Yes. Based upon the court's question, I guess I have one additional. The tamper, it sounds like, was a towel between the monitor and her ankle. Is that correct? Yeah, I believe that's what she'd stated, that she was putting that in between the, because there's the strap and then there's the unit part. And the unit part is what you can't put anything between. You can put stuff around the strap, but just not the unit itself. And was that in December that you were calling her and asking about that? I would have to look at her reports. There were quite a few. Let me ask in a different way. Uh, maybe this will help. Um, was she saying that she was using that towel between herself and the, and the monitor because of the health issues she had going on? No, not, not at that time. Um, she had started to wrap the strap due to her sores. Um, and I told her that was fine as long as it didn't get into the unit itself. Okay. No other questions. But again, she said she was doing it to when she was drinking. Right, because I had questions as far as the alcohol readings that were coming in on the tampers. Okay. All right, anything from anyone else on this witness? No, Your Honor, no, Your Honor. thank you. Any, any further evidence for the state, Ms. Norris? No, Your Honor, thank you. Okay. Any evidence for the defense, Mr. Patterson? Your Honor, I would first call the therapist at Miracle's house, which I did not get her name, so I'd ask that she identify herself first. Okay. My name is Megan Pinkley and I'm an LAC here. How do you spell those names, please? M-E-G-A-N Pinkley, P-I-N-K-L-E-Y. And what was your title again? Uh, I'm an LAC. Which means? Licensed Addictions Counselor. Okay. And it, well, you're with which organization? Miracles. Miracles. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Patterson. Judge, if I could ask that she be sworn in. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. And is there some way we can keep both you and the defendant on the screen? There we go. Can you right. see us? Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. And again, um, Ms. Pinkley, could you state your name for the record? Megan Pinkley. And you stated that you are a licensed alcohol counselor at Miracles, is that correct? Licensed addictions counselor at Miracles. Very good, thank you. Um, and then also I wanted to find out how long have you been at Miracles? I started July 4th, 2022. And prior to that, what did you do? I was a behavioral health tech at a local hospital. Now, as a part of your work, at, and tell me, first of all, what is Miracles? It's a residential treatment facility for women dealing with substance abuse. Okay. And as a part of your work at Miracles, are you familiar with Megan Barnett? I am. And can you tell us when she would have um, entered into Miracles? She checked in on March 13th, 2023. And was that following any other type of treatment? I do not believe so. Yes. Um, and uh, when she first arrived, um, 
what kind of, was there an intake done? So she arrived five days prior initially, but due to being under the influence, she went to detox for five days and then came straight here. And then the intake was complete. Okay. And through the intake, what did you determine any course of treatment would be? Um, she would continue with level 3.3, which is inpatient treatment for a period of 28 days. And then afterwards, we would look at um, outpatient treatment as a follow-up recommendation. When would the 28 days be finished? Uh, Monday, April 10th. And up to this time on March 27, could you give us a summary of her treatment and how she's done? Sure. So she has done well. She met with me. We meet weekly at that least. We've established treatment plans and attack tasks for each goal that she has been working on through our program. She's attended all the groups that she has been asked to attend. Um, she's been attentive to court dates and things like that. So, so far she has done everything that we have asked her to do for treatment. And I know this is a tough question, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. Um, do you have a prognosis on her? Um, I don't. I won't give you like a, a firm answer because it's substance abuse, right? We never know. But what I can say is that when she did enter, she was um, resistant, not super excited to be here, but she has opened up to the idea that there may actually be issues that she has that she needs to address in order to protect her sobriety moving forward. And going forward with the time that she is at Miracles, what are the, what's the plan for her? I am going to recommend that she attends level one outpatient treatment with the potential for level two if she seems to struggle. Um, I'm also recommending that when she leaves here, she immediately gets involved with sober living. Um, so continuing with her mental health, um, getting a mental health evaluation and following through with those recommendations, following through with outpatient recommendations and as well as sober living, I think that that will be the best scenario for her when she she exits our program. And what is sober living? I, we haven't uh, decided exactly where she's going to go, but it's going to be either a sober living facility or like an Oxford house, something like that. We haven't really narrowed down exactly, you know, what she would prefer. You mentioned that there would be a mental health evaluation. Has she done anything with that to get an evaluation yet? She has not. She has been uh, very verbal about wanting to get one while she's here. However, with our um, staffing issues, we are not able to facilitate getting them in some cases to come here to get that mental health evaluation. But her and I have been in communication about making sure that we have that settled and scheduled for as soon as she gets out of here so she can she can go and get that done and, and follow through with what's recommended. Now, you stated that it could be level one or level two outpatient. Could you tell us the difference in those two? I'm going to start recommending with level one, which is two groups a week and a meeting with her counselor. However, if she has trouble, she's going to be encouraged to verbalize that. And then if we need to bump her up to more intensive, which is going to be three groups a week and a counselor, that's an option that she has. And how long are those usually in length? Usually it's a 12 week session. So three months, depending on her ability and attendance. No other questions, Your Honor. Ms. Norris? I just wanted to confirm, I wasn't sure if I quite got the date. Uh, when did she come into the program there at Miracles? Let me confirm, I'm, I'm almost positive it's March 13th. Yeah, she checked in on March 13th. Okay, um, uh, nothing further, Your Honor, uh, thank you. I guess, Judge, one more question based on that. You stated that she came in on the 13th. Did that include the five days or not? It does not. That does not count towards the 28-day program. The five days of detox prior was on her own. Which would have been, my math is right, uh, March 8th? Correct. Okay. Nothing further. Thank you. You said she'd been attentive to court dates. How many court dates has she had? Because I think this is the first one she's had scheduled uh, 
with me March since March 13th. She has another court uh, date. Something with Sedgwick County, and she had an original date. Um, I believe it was last. Was it Tuesday? Mm -hmm. And then it we we she showed up, and then they needed a letter, and then so they went Wednesday, and then she showed up again, and they continued it to this Wednesday. So she, the Wednesday of this week, two right. days from now. Okay. All right. Anything else anyone wants to ask her based on that? No, no, Your Honor. Okay. Any further evidence, Mr. Patterson? No, Your Honor. All right. Both parties rest. Any arguments or recommendations, Ms. Norris? Uh, Your Honor, we have arguments. And um, uh, you want uh, sentencing recommendations at this yes. time? Yes, because I do find I do find that the defendant has violated her her probation, and I would point out that it is she had a revocation in July. She had a modification in October based on continued use between July and October, and she was recommend ordered at that time in October to do treatment. That was October. And now here we are back on our, our uh, second revocation where she's clearly tampered with her device, clearly continued to use right up to being in need of detox March 8th. So it is clear to this court that she has violated her probation and uh, is in violation. So recommendations on disposition, starting with you, Ms. Norris. Your Honor, Stan would be recommending um, that the court do a 12 month extension of her probation for her to complete uh, these treatment programs that uh, seem to be uh, being recommended from uh, both the counselor here. And I do believe that Ms. Donovan uh, mentioned some treatment as well. Uh, I do believe that she needs uh, some a jail sanction. Um, and I think uh, I'll leave it to court's discretion on when you want her to serve it. But I think um, I think 10 days in jail is appropriate based on uh, the fact that this is her second um, probation violation, uh, rather significant probation violations. And we didn't even make it a year uh, before she had significant issues um, and so we will be requesting that and the court will need to, I don't think the court needs to address attorney's fees. I think once Mr. Patterson's on, he's kind of on. So I, I don't think the court needs to address any additional fees at this point. Thank you, Mr. Patterson. Thank you, Your Honor. Judge, um, I would ask the court to consider continuing the case for disposition. The court's already made findings that there's been a violation. I can tell the court why, and I, I think you've probably heard this from me before, um, even before you took the bench, that um, always for one, trying to keep the people's feet to the fire, that uh, while they are doing the right thing to make sure they continue to do the right thing, make sure they know that uh, there's a little bit more that uh, is at risk. And of course, at a disposition on a warrant that's already been decided, the risk is um, a sanction or serve the entire sentence. Um, the treatment she's in apparently seems to be one that she has um, followed through with at this point. Um, as I think uh, Ms. Pinkley said it best um, when request about a prognosis, well, this is addiction treatment. Um, meaning that uh, um, it's, it's an up and downhill battle for clients that uh, they uh, um, have times where they're doing well, but they also then fall back. That, that's just the nature of the beast on addiction treatment, but she's doing well right now. She should know that doing well can be the difference between her staying out of jail or serving an entire sentence. And judge by continuing disposition, that would really help us out to make sure that she stays on the right track, gets into this uh, sober living environment, continues with her mental health evaluation, knows that she's got to do all these things for the court to come back and show the court that she's done these. So I guess my initial re request would just be to ask the court to continue disposition to get further 
reports of completing miracles as well as her updates on where she's at. In lieu of that, Your Honor, um, I have not said anything to Ms. Barnett would lead her to believe that a sanction is not something that's probably going to happen. I mean, uh, sanctions as a result of probation violations are um, something that uh, helps them maybe get better on probation. So, Judge, I would tell the court that whatever sanction the court would deem appropriate, I know that uh, Ms. Barnett would accept the court's ruling, but we just asked the court to allow her to complete miracles prior to that time. Thank you. Ms. Donovan, what do you recommend? Your Honor, I would concur with Mr. Patterson. I feel like um, Ms. Barnett is on the right path right now. However, she's still in a structured living environment. Um, having another court hearing uh, to assess her progress might be beneficial for her, might be another incentive or reason um, to stay on the right track. Um, as I said, we worked with her previously. She's been back to court. She's been to inpatient. She's been an outpatient. And now she's back in court again. Um, so she has continued to struggle and I just think that anything we could do to help her at this point for accountability might be a good thing. Um, hopefully she will get into sober living upon release and will continue on that path. But again, I, I would agree. Thank you all. Miss Barnett was found driving on June 21st, 2022 on a public roadway in Butler County, Kansas, over twice the legal limit of 0.08, specifically at 0.172 BAC. She has been on supervised bond, followed by probation ever since June 26, 2022. She was in violation during her bond. She was sent in September 20th, 2021 for six months. Her probation, she was found in violation of her probation yet less than a year later, July, 2022. Her probation was revoked, but reinstated after she served, I believe it was a few days maybe in jail, I don't recall, but as a sanction. That was July, by October, she was still using but rather than coming in on a full-blown revocation, she consented to do treatment for continued use. That didn't happen uh, right away. Somewhere along the way, she tried a treatment, but apparently that didn't work out. And we come back here on this revocation, her second revocation, since she was sentenced. She's been on electronic monitoring a good portion of that time as well. And she either can't or won't quit using. And I suspect as folks have said, it's got to be an addiction the way she's consuming and violating. Yeah, she served 48 hours from the July 11th and then she went back on to probation and violated her SCRAM by October. And it was only removed, the SCRAM was only removed in December because of uh, problems with her leg, who knows how 
the results would have been from December to now, but I don't think anyone in earshot of this hearing or participating in it can fail to see the strong addiction this woman has to alcohol. And I noticed throughout this hearing, her probation is, her probation officer has emphasized how much she needs treatment, how many health there have been, uh, welfare checks made on her because she's obviously got at least Miss Donovan and it hinted at maybe a lot more concern that she's going to do herself in with alcohol consumption. Five alcohol uses. 27 tampers with alcohol between July and December, five months. Miss Donovan said, oh, no, I believe it was Miss Moore mentioned that day after day they had issues. She even admitted that when she drank, she would deliberately put the cloth between her ankle and her bracelet, trying to apparently and obviously distort the results. When she even went into this treatment, Ms. Pinkley said she was resistant. She arrived and needed five days of detox before she could start the treatment 14 days ago, but she did make it through detox and she has apparently made it 14 days into treatment, which seems to be a tremendous step since that day in 2021 that she was arrested. Finally, maybe a breakthrough, finally. And then she's got something going on in Wichita, Sedgwick County that we don't know about, but it's obviously something enough that she's been going back to court for. You know, Normally when somebody violates their probation to this condition, it's serve your time. But in this case, it's obviously an addiction, a very deep addiction. And, and again, if she weren't starting to show some concern and effort, I might still say serve your time. But because she is now trying and maybe now for the first time in years, she's got a real chance at getting a grip on this addiction and being able to contribute to, to uh, society and not be a law violator. And I know two weeks, that may be uh, too optimistic to make all these conclusions, but it, it is a huge step. So for this reason, I am going to follow Ms. Norris's recommendation that we reinstate her probation for 12 months. But this is conditioned upon you Ms. Barnett completing successfully every step, every inch, every direction that you receive at Miracle House. Because it is a miracle that I'm not just outright revoking your probation. It is a miracle that you've got a chance at straightening your life out and kicking this horrible addiction that's had such a grip on you that it's controlled your life and potentially killed people with, with a DUI if you've been in the wrong minute of your addiction and driving. There will be some jail sanctions, but I'm going to also take Mr. Patterson and Ms. Donovan and I think Ms. Pinkley's advice and hold off on further orders until you complete miracles. And that includes not only their inpatient treatment, but their outpatient as well. So I want you to completely graduate from inpatient. And then I want you to completely graduate from outpatient, following whichever one they want you to start with. Now they like to start with, it sounds like least restrictive and work their way up to most restrictive. I'm probably just the person I would type, I'd say let's start with the most restrictive and work back, but that's their call to make. 
you really open up to those people at Miracles. You really take their advice because this is probably the last chance you're going to get before a lot of other things start happening if you don't. Okay. If you want a good life, you want to get your life back and get out of trouble, listen to them. Also, I want you to stay in touch with Miss Donovan. She's still your probation officer for the next year. And I want you to sign any releases or any documents she needs so that she can keep constant tab on you and make sure you're toeing the line and doing whatever else you need to do. All previous conditions will remain in place. And if you need Miss Donovan to review those with you, I'm sure she can do that. They went on for about 10 more minutes about scheduling and ended up coming back about 90 days later. And she looks a lot healthier. And uh, court service officer Christine Donovan is here. This matter does come on for hearing on a warrant to show cause why probation should not be revoked. The defendant was sentenced September 20th of 2021 for DUI to a six month sentence with one year court services probation. Her first warrant to show cause hearing was April 18th. Of, I'm sorry, first warrant to show cause was filed April 18th of 2022. It was alleged at that time she failed to pay as ordered, she failed to serve 48 hours in jail as ordered, and she failed to refrain from using alcohol and drugs. So July 11th of 2021, a hearing was held on those allegations. Probation was revoked after she was found in violation and ordered to serve the original 48 hours as a sanction, apparently. Uh, she was reinstated for 12 months on December 20th, 2022. A second warrant show cause was filed alleging she failed to remain compliant with her scram and failed to retain or refrain from possession or consumption of alcohol. There was an addendum filed uh, March 23rd of 2023, and I think that pretty well sets out the hearing, the history of this case as well. So. At this time, Mr. Patterson, how does your client wish to proceed on these allegations that she has violated her probation? Your Honor, just a last piece of additional history in the case. We yes. were last here on March 27, 2023. At that time, the court uh, did find violations. The court did set disposition over. Okay. The reason disposition was set over, it was at the request, of course, of the defense, but I think Ms. Donovan also had agreed with that, that uh, there was a bed open for an inpatient treatment facility, and there was a, I guess, a desire to see how well she was going to do in that, whether she was going to stick with it or not, and based upon that, the court was setting disposition over. I have received a discharge report I believe I had emailed it to the court um, that she had successfully completed the, that treatment and they were further recommending she enter into an outpatient program as well as some other things. It's my understanding that uh, she is currently an outpatient, that she is being doing the things that she's required to do and being successful at it. Um, so, um, for purposes of disposition, judge, given the, that, uh, we believe she's doing everything that she should be doing and, and doing it well, I guess, given the circumstances the court set out and where she was at previously and how bad the addiction was to have her successfully go through the thing she's doing that, uh, um, we would ask the court to consider that in disposition and order that, uh, she be reinstated for one year continue to complete all of the things that she is to complete. We had asked the court to consider transferring it to Sedgwick County where she is currently living and on probation with Sedgwick County District Court Court Services so that she could report one place and, and continue to uh, do the things that she's doing. What are her Sedgwick County charges? I don't have that judge, so that might be Ms. Donovan's. Ms. Donovan, do you know what she's on probation in Cedric County for? Your Honor, that is also a DUI case. Mm -hmm. and she had, after, was that before or after Butler County's DUI? Um, actually, this case was not a violation. It was before. 
okay. uh, this probation. And Your Honor, she does have another pending matter in Sedgwick County currently. And what is that? That is for interference with law enforcement. It is a misdemeanor case. And when did that allegedly occur, if you know? That is tied to this case, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, January 11th, 2023. Okay, and the state's uh, response at this time to disposition? Yes, Your Honor. So I can tell the court that um, I think Mr. Patterson's uh, kind of chronological um, recitation of where we're at today is all correct. Um, I did receive an email from Ms. Donovan kind of outlining uh, where Ms. Barnett is um, and what she's been doing since the last court day um, as it relates to treatment. Um, and I, Ms. Donovan, I'm sure, can uh, uh, provide more detail if needed, but it looks like she uh, uh, is uh, attempting to uh, work with treatment providers. Um, it looks like maybe there was an issue with um, a UA that uh, needed to be submitted that wasn't, um, that uh, is kind of delaying a placement maybe in a sober living, but there's some thought that um, she needs uh, inpatient uh, well, or a sober living house, um, her inpatient counselor felt like she needed to be in sober living house. Um, looks like she is attending some AA meetings, um, has a job interview. Um, I don't know. Generally, my position on um, warrant show causes is that there has to be some form of accountability. I'm not sure how Ms. Um, Donovan feels on a jail sanction, but I, I feel like there has to be some form of a jail sanction. It sounds like uh, Ms. Donovan, at least, the tenor uh, of her email um, makes it sound like she is making some efforts. So it sounds like, um, you know, I, I think the state would probably ask that she be placed back on probation, but I do feel like there has to be some form of accountability in the way of a jail sanction. Uh, would ask that she be placed back on probation um, with all the uh, same and previously ordered conditions and just basically to follow through with all these treatment recommendations as well as any aftercare recommendations. Um, that would be about it, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Donovan, could you provide us with anything additionally in your opinions that haven't been addressed so far? Um, yes, Your Honor. So I've actually had an opportunity to speak with Ms. Barnett's counselor uh, this past week, and um, she actually uh, forwarded some documentation to me uh, regarding uh, the defendant's attendance at outpatient treatment. Um, Megan is attending, albeit some hit and miss. Um, there's been a couple of weeks with no attendance in, let's see, April 22nd to April 28th that week. Um, she missed a group um, May 6th to May 12th, no attendance at all. And May 20th to May 26th, no attendance. On May 19th, the counselor was concerned. Uh, she did request a UA when Megan attended um, treatment and she did leave the facility without providing that UA, which raises some you know, red flags or concerns. Um, so she is attending, just not consistently, um, in my opinion, could be attending regularly because two of these groups are by Zoom. Only one of them is in person each week. Um, so just needs to be doing better with that and needs to be, you know, submitting UAs for accountability when her counselor asks for them. Uh, she is attending mental health treatment. I have received verification from Hunter Health. Um, I know that she's been doing that for a while now, and it sounds like she is still continuing to, which is very important. Um, one concern I do have is that upon discharge from inpatient, inpatient treatment, uh, the counselor, according to her outpatient counselor, also, you know, really felt was very adamant. She needed additional support and accountability in sober living. Um, the 
defendant reported to me upon discharge that she was going to sober living and provided me the information. Um, so it was my understanding she was residing there. And I only learned on May 31st um, when she reported that she actually never lived there, never went. Um, there were reasons for that, uh, albeit um, I understand she had financial difficulty keeping an apartment and residing there and paying. Um, um, and then I understand she was one of a few females in a male facility. Now, with that being said, probably could have chosen another program, another residential facility if that wasn't going to work out, but I never heard from her again. So I did try to talk to her outpatient counselor and verify um, what the recommendation is for her currently. And she really couldn't gauge that right now because she hasn't had a UA, you know, there's the hit and miss treatment. So there's just not a good gauge on what's going on right now. Um, so definitely needs to be doing attending treatment consistently and working the program. And it just kind of sounds like that's not necessarily happening all the time. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. And I, I guess I just have to complain about the way that this hearing is being handled. I can tell the court I received a discharge report from inpatient treatment, but if we're going to use other reports and other things, I should have those ahead of time. I should have the opportunity to talk about those with my client, try and figure out what there might be concerning those that we need to address. I haven't seen those. I don't know anything about them. So it, it, it kind of concerns me that I'm being blindsided here. So I cannot really represent my client. Um, so um, that concerns me, but I would tell the court and understand Mr. Sweeney's um, position. If the court is ordering sanctions, we would ask the court to allow it to be on weekends so that she continue with the things that she is doing, um, her mental health treatment, outpatient treatment, and such, um, so that she can continue with those and still serve a sanction. Thank you. My notes uh, at that hearing on March 27th say that Defendant requested sentencing be continued to, a, which would be disposition, to a later date to allow defendant to complete the program prior to sentencing. Judge accepted, judge ordered that the defendant graduate inpatient and outpatient treatment before sentencing. Um, so you did graduate your inpatient, you did start your outpatient, and I'm sitting here thinking, wonderful, great, but uh, yeah, there needs to be sanctions. And I'm going to order Do you do any treatment of any kind on the weekends? Um, no. Um, I have the job interview tomorrow and that's the only thing I have going on and in college and that's not on the weekends. When is your job? Where's your job interview? It's at Texan tomorrow at 11 a.m. And then I start college as well. You start college tomorrow also? No, not tomorrow. I'm just enrolling today. I just enrolled today. What college are you going to? Um, I'm going to WATC for inspection. So when I get the job at Tech Shaw, I'm just going to ask to be moved up to inspection. Um, I, have a lot, I have a lot of depression issues. And so that's not an excuse not to attend my groups and stuff like that. But I'm like um, up and down on stuff. Well, I'm not going to accept up and down. You've got a lot of help and a lot of people to rely on, starting with Miss Donovan to your alcohol and drug therapist, to your mental health therapist. You've had your attorney. So, you know, you've got people to rely on. I understand. And this, and I understand Mr. Patterson's position. It's, it's a legitimate position about needing this information to go over with you in advance. I'm going to order that the next eight weekends you serve from Friday to Sunday, 48 hours in the county jail, starting this weekend at 7 p.m. And in the meantime, you are to have no 
I mean zero unexcused absences in your treatments, in your probation reporting. I'm not gonna change it just yet. I want Ms. Donovan to stay on this for right now, although at some point I do wanna be able to change it. And as far as I'm concerned, when a person walks out before they get a UA that's been ordered, that shows that they're dirty. And you better not have any more violations of probation this is your second time around to be found in violation of probation. So you got to break it, your original sentence and only had 48 hours, which you didn't serve until you were ordered to in your first probation revocation. Now you've had your second revocation. I, I think it's, it behooves you to not have any more violations of probation and not come back on a third. So, Ms. Donovan, when do you want her to report to you, or do you prefer I transfer it to Sedgwick County right now? Your Honor, um, I will leave that to the court's discretion. Um, as far as transferring, she does need to contact me after court today. Um, one other issue of concern is her probation expiration date. Mm -hmm. And uh, it looks like that is going to expire, Your Honor, in July, July 11th. No, extended 12 more months from today. But Ms. Ms. Barnett, if you had gotten in here and taken care of this in a timely fashion, you could have been off probation, even with a year probation, you could have been off probation by the fall of 2022 and now here we're going in another year so yeah it's my I said you better addiction I understand it's an addiction but you still have accountability I can't just turn you loose to go out there and stay drunk I just can't do that you've got to get your life back on track okay at least please be transferred to Wichita just for have one probation instead of on three well, you have three cases, that, so I don't think two probation officers right now is unreasonable. I have oh. three. All right, I don't think three probation officers for three cases. You know, you, you had separate cases, you got into separate incidents, so now you have separate consequences. And Ms. Barnett, I'm afraid your attitude isn't exactly stellar today, so. I'm just sad about it. I just want, I really want to be transferred and I really want to be transferred to Texas as well. And I just feel like I'm just going in circles. You said Texas? Yeah, I would like to be transferred to Texas to my sisters. Well, I've got a better idea. Instead of being transferred, how about just do everything you're supposed to and uh, get off probation? Maybe even get off a little early if you start going to all your meetings and not skipping any and not walking out when your counselor tells you to go do a UA. And that would have made a tremendous difference in this hearing today if you didn't have that. I'm yeah. sorry. But you need to make minimal payments, although that's the least of your problem, but you do need to keep going to those, those appointments and, and comply with those and don't get any new violations, of course. All right, if there's nothing further, we will be in recess on the Barnett matter. Probation again is extended for 12 months from today. So that was last June. I hadn't heard anything on this case in so long that I had actually taken it off my update list. And then, just this past week, she pops up again. Uh, next matter is State of Kansas versus Megan Barnett. 21 TR 1470. Council state their appearances, please. Chair McGee, on behalf of the state. Chair Darren Patterson, appear on behalf of Megan Barnett. Miss Barnett does appear from court security to judge on this warrant to show cause. I can tell the court I have reviewed it with Miss Barnett um, with the allegations that she has. Um, failed to abstain from the use of alcohol. 
I would tell the court that uh, Ms. Barnett is going to waive formal hearing on that allegation. She is going to stipulate that uh, she has um, used alcohol as alleged. All right. Is there any negotiated uh, uh, plea or is this or uh, there, has, there has not been any judge. So this is a waiver and then we're going to make our request to the court. All right. Ms. Barnett, have you heard what the attorney, uh, what Mr. Patterson's told me? Yes, sir. And is that correct? You're, you're waiving your right to this hearing? Um, is that saying that I don't want to take it to trial or I don't want to comment? Okay, this, this hearing is to determine if you violated the terms of your probation. Uh, sometimes it's referred to as a warrant to show cause. Uh, in such a hearing, you have a right to a hearing where the state would have to uh, show evidence that you violated it, that the burden of proof at this time would be a preponderance of the evidence or more likely than not. Um, you can waive that and stipulate or agree that to the violation or not challenge that, that violation. Um, if I, but the court then would, um, be able to, uh, if you waive it, uh, and stipulate, I would find that you have violated the terms of your probation. And then I would hear statements of the parties in regards to what should happen on your case. Now, ultimately at the, you know, you have a sentence, a con what we normally refer to as a controlling sentence when somebody's placed on probation. Uh, you, your probation could be revoked in order to serve that time. Uh, there's other steps, too, that, you know, the court could place you back on probation, uh, could close the case, any number of things along that line. But that's the, that's the, the, the broad, broad strokes of what this hearing is for. Uh, have you had an opportunity to discuss this with Mr. Patterson? Um, we discussed it before I came to court. Yes. Um, I just, um, I just don't, um, I understand what you're saying. I just, so once I waive my right, do I get to, um, I guess. Megan, this, Megan, remember this is that first part of the hearing. Okay. There's the second part the judge is referring to where we, ask him to uh we make recommendations to the court remember that we talked about that yes okay so we're waiving the first part where it alleges you consumed alcohol remember okay well um i do agree that i violate my probation by uh, refusing a breathalyzer so yes i did violate it by refusing All right. Um, the motion, I believe, failure to refrain from possessing or consuming alcohol, which is not exactly what she's saying. So the, I'll have the state go ahead and present its evidence. Mr. Regeer? Uh, yes, Your Honor. The um, state would respectfully call um, Christine Donovan to the stand. Ms. Donovan, if you would raise your right hand, please. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. You're under oath. Counsel, you may proceed. Uh, please state your name for the record. Christine Donovan. Um, what, what, where are you employed? Butler County Court Services. And uh, what is your professional title in that capacity? I'm a court service officer. And how long have you worked as a court service officer? Um, approximately 28 years. Okay. Um, did you file a, a request for revocation of probation with the court in this matter? I did. Okay. Uh, do you recall when that request was filed? Uh, July 18th of 2023. Okay. And, um, are you the uh, court service officer assigned to the defendant in this matter? I am, yes. Um, could you please describe um, what led you to um, to uh, filing the request for revocation? I received um, 
affidavits from the Butler County Jail regarding um, the defendant uh, showing up to... I don't have a copy of the affidavit. So I object to hearsay unless we actually have an affidavit signed by the jail. Mr. McGear, in response to the objection. Uh, Your Honor, the um, I myself do not appear to be in receipt of these affidavits. Um, if the um, if the court is disinclined to either to uh, take judicial notices of such affidavits, the um, it would appear that it would be appropriate to set this matter over for those. Well, the, the objection is is hearsay. Um, I'm not sure if if this is being asserted for the uh, for the the truth of the matter asserted or to other uh, for other reasons why this testimony is being offered. So. Um, I'll, I'll sustain the objection, but you may you may ask uh, further questions. Next question, please. Uh, Ms. Donovan, did you ever speak to the defendant regarding any um, allegations of alcohol? Uh, I, yes, I did. And did she, and um, she, what did she tell you? I'm going to object as the foundation um, as to when this conversation took place. Judge, I think that's important. Sustained. Uh, Ms. Donovan, what was the date of the um, conversation? I'm going to have to review my notes for a minute. Um, I spoke with the defendant on July 12th of 2023 uh, regarding the information I had received uh, when she showed up to serve uh, her 48 hour, one of her 48 hour weekends. And at that time, she denied that she had been drinking, but did say that she did refuse a PBT test as she did not think she should have had to take it at the time. Uh, did this, um, did this um, refusal referred to by the defendant occur while the defendant was on probation? Yes. And, um, And is it a requirement of the defendants reporting probation in this matter that she submit to random but reasonable breath, blood, and your urinalysis testing? Yes, it is a condition of probation. Does, does this defendant's conditions of probation um, allow her discretion on when to take um, breath, blood, and or urinalysis testing as requested? No. No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Patterson? On the day that you met with her, which I, was that July 12th, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Did you ask her to take a UA or breath test? No, not at that time. So, and the conditions of probation is that court services can request a, a, a breath, urine, or other test when it is reasonable. Isn't that correct? Yes. Doesn't mean it applies to the whole world out there, does it? But let me restate that. Sure, I understand that question. If somebody... Um, a private party in Wichita asked for a breath test 
it, that wouldn't mean she's in violation of that order, would it? No, this pertains to her probation. And court services request. Yes. No other questions. Mr. Regeer, any uh, uh, redirect? One moment, Your Honor. Council? Uh, nothing further from the state, Your Honor. All right, Ms. That completes Ms. Donovan's testimony. Uh, she's off the witness stand. Any other witnesses, Mr. Regeer? Uh, none from the state, Your Honor. Mr. Patterson, any witnesses? No evidence, Your Honor. I'll hear a statement to counsel. Uh, yes, Your Honor. The, um, the defendant has already admitted on the record that she is willing to stipulate to um, violate her probation. We're, we're past that. She, I couldn't accept it because she didn't uh, she did she didn't answer my questions in that regard so that's why we, we i said proceed with your evidence uh, your honor as the court has already um observed in um the, in this matter the uh, preponderance of the standard of proof in in this type of matter is preponderance of the evidence um pursuant to the uh journal entry of misdemeanor conviction from the september 20th, 2021 day, it specifically orders as a standard condition of reporting probation, um, quote, the defendant shall not possess or consume alcohol or drugs and shall not enter taverns and or establishments that serve liquor, cereal, beverages, or illegal drugs. Um, the fact that the um, defendant um, didn't sp specifically refuse to take a um, um, PBT while serving a sanction, I believe, speaks for itself. Um, so, with that, with all that in mind, um, given that, um, and as well as the fact that this is the uh, third warrant show cause filed in this case, um, the state would respectfully submit, at least insofar as the refusal to take a PBT is concerned, that a defendant that the defendant has violated her probation. Well, Mr. Regeer, the, the testimony I heard was the witness, the only witness you offered didn't ask her to take the test. All right, Mr. Patterson, any arguments? Just briefly, Judge, the sentencing journal entry of October 12, 2021 does state the conditions of probation. The condition concerning breath, blood, or UAs is specifically that it's at the request of CSO, um, not at the request of the rest of the world. So uh, whether she was asked that or not at the jail would not be a branch of the court services. So um, we would just ask the court to find that the burden has not been met in this case. Well, I, I, I find that the state hasn't met its burden. Uh, now, there may have been a situation where uh, probation uh, requests that when somebody's coming into the jail on a, on a uh, probation violation or uh, an order of the court uh, asking the jail personnel to, to get a test done, but there's not testimony to that effect, nor is there uh, the witness that would have uh, was called that, that Ms. Barnett uh, may have uh, 
uh, refused to, to do that. So I, I find that the state hasn't met its burden. So I believe Ms. Barnett continues to be on probation. Is that correct? She is still on probation, Judge. All right. So the, the motion of the state is denied. Ms. Barnett, you are still under probation. You still have to report as directed and follow the rules that, uh, uh, that were previously ordered. But uh, as a, for on this particular motion, on this fact, uh, you, the uh, court is, does not find that you violated the, the term of the probation. And is there anything further on this matter today? Nothing from the state, Your Honor. I would just ask the court or ask Ms. Donovan, does she have a time that she does want Ms. Barnett to report to her or a way to report? She was directed to contact me after court today. Okay, nothing further, Judge. Ms. Do um, yes, Ms. Barnett, did you hear that? You contact? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I talked to her before court too. Well, the, the order is that you, you contact her afterwards after your hearing, yes. which is which is now, so okay. you, are, you are released at this time. All right, thank you, I appreciate it. Next. Well, we'll have to keep an eye on this one. I have a feeling if she violated once, it's probably gonna keep happening, unfortunately. If anybody sees any other hearings with her in it, please let me know. Kansas' system's still down.